One plus one plus one, you keep telling us that that's three, so why don't you believe it? There's more, thank you. He just admitted it. He said there's more than has wash or duri. So word of Allah is one, right? You mean uh, word of Allah? Yeah, the Quran? Yeah. yeah. Is it one? one. Yeah. But you said that it's also half wash and duri. Is that more? Seven or one? What are you trying to say? The Quran is one. Quran. There you go. Seven equals one in Islamic mathematics. Brilliant. Bravo, guys. So how can you have one and three in your Qurans, no, no, no. You but we can't have one and three in our concept of divinity? Do you want me to show Where? you? I'll show you. One second. Show me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So Jesus is dad? Yeah, you can put this on. You can put this on. So I'm going to show you where Jesus says he's dad. In the Bible? Yeah. Right. Now, I don't know how much you know about the Christian faith. Do you know, in, in terms of the Christian faith, do you know who the father is? I know you believe in uh, the Trinity. Do you believe in Trinity or? Yeah, we all Christians that? believe in the Trinity. All of them? All of them. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a Christian that doesn't believe in the Trinity. Really? Yeah. Anyone what who claims about, uh, other denominations? Uh, all, all Christian denominations believe in the Trinity. Anyone who claims to be Christian. What is, what is the Trinity? Well, let's just deal with one thing at a time. You asked me to show you where where Jesus says um, that he that you that he is God and that you should worship him. But you didn't ask that, but I'm going to show you. Okay. But first, I, I just want to be. You know about our one religion. One, yes, I do. One do? question, one question at a time, though. Let's let's deal with one question at a time. Firstly, I just want to establish who the Father is according to the Bible. Okay, because that's important. Okay. So in John 17, Jesus says these words. Jesus spoke these things, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, "Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son." that the Son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God. So Jesus is saying the Father is the only true God. Okay, I just want to be clear about my terms. So according to the Bible, who is the Father? I'm asking you. According uh, to the Bible. Well, as far as I, I know that you... Uh, I don't comprehend that Jesus is God. One second, brother. I'm just asking there's, you... There's three gods. That's, yeah, that's something I, I, I can't understand. That's I'm going to come step to step by step. Uh, I'm going step I, by step. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I'm going to go step by step. Explain it to me, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Mm -hmm. So according to the Bible, we've established that the Father is God. Okay, then yeah. who's the father? Right, so he's God, I just said that. Are you listening? Are you God. actually listening? Yeah, you said Jesus is God. No, I said the father is God. Are you listening? I'm listening, but right, I'm trying so to understand. Try to keep up. Okay. <laughs> right, just, so according... Just slowly. Yeah, I, 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 I can't, I'm not sure how much slower I can go, to be honest. Okay, um, no problem. So in terms, of, in terms of what Jesus said, Jesus has just said the father is God. Okay, the father is God. Right, now, then Jesus says this. For not even the Father judges anyone, so God, not even God judges anyone, but He has given all judgment to the Son. So that's referring to Him. Okay, so yeah. the Father so gave the judgment son. to the Son. Yes. So that all... So get, give are up you listening? Oh, authority. now he's listening. <laughs> now he wants I'm to listen. To, yeah, so so to, stay to with me. With you. Yeah, follow with me. So we've established the Father is God. Now listen to the next bit. So that all will honor the son even as they honor the father now let's just rethink what the father who the father is the father is god so in other words jesus is saying so that all will honor the son even as they honor god so there's two now yes there are two there's two gods. father and son and they are both divine okay yep okay they are both divine yes they're both divine they are both so divine. the two gods not two gods no one God. One God. Yes. And who is that? The Father or the Both. Uh, Jesus? Both. Both of them? Yes. Two gods. One God. <laughs> yeah, I'm confused, my friend. You're, you're, I think you're confused. I'm confused because, too. Yeah, because well, what that's, you're... That's the confusion. <laughs> it's, I can't understand. It's, it's not you see, the, the thing is about, about Islam is we believe in one God. You said that. We believe that there's 
there's only one God for all the prophets that came in before. Are you saying that two God. can't be one and one can't be two? No, how? how right. You, so, are, you are one person, I'm one person. Okay, okay. Two. Right, two right. So one. let me ask you this question. There are, you, there's a half Quran, a Wash Quran, and a Duri Quran. Are they one Quran or, or three Qurans? No, that's a different recitation. Are they, ah, but are they one or three? There's one Quran, different recitation. Thank you. So you Why? have one and you have three. You so how can you have one and three in your no, Quran, no, no. You but we can't have one and three in our concept you of divinity? You understand what the recitation is? Tell me, the, uh, do you know what a recitation is? Yeah, I know what a recitation is. Do you know the Arabic language? No, I don't know the Arabic. You don't know, you know anything about Most Arabic Muslims language? don't know the Arabic language. Well, I do. Good for you. Joy, I, I know, know English. That I speak. <laughs> I speak. And I know Spanish. Okay, Egyptians. I know speak, Spanish too. <laughs> speak, speak oh, Arabic. Well, never. I understand them. Yeah. But they speak in a different. Let's say no. they speak to me. It's a different dialect. If I have a, a, a Gulf. Uh, Persian or whatever, they speak Arabic, but it's a different dialect. So what you're saying is you can have multiple Qurans that are one Quran. Not Quran, multiple, multiple dialects. Multiple ah, right, so is the Quran one or three? three. One. one. So why is there half Quran, Wash Quran and Duri Quran? It's so what, no, what you're doing, brother, in terms of word for what you're doing is you're creating a double standard. What you're saying is, in my belief, it's okay to have plurality and unity, and that's not a problem. But if you have Plurality and unity in your belief, that's nonsensical. You, I think that's what you, you mean right, specifically yeah, about uh, God or Allah. He's, right. he's saying specifically there's only one Allah, whereas with uh, Christianity, the there's, there's only one God. three parts to We're the same. Uh, no. Yeah. Unless you're a Christian, don't try to talk about Afi. Ask a Christian, don't God, tell us what Afi is. Well, I, I, I mean, I'm aware that it's uh, three parts of the same no, divine being. I don't being. believe in three parts, bro. Uh, so that's what I, um, that's you, what I you, heard. That's, that, then you've heard wrong. Okay, fair enough. Um, if you carry on from there, I guess. Right. So, as Chris, so let, let we've, now that we've established that there is a double standard being applied here, that there is, there is a, a multiplicity and unity within Islam, but not in Christianity. So one is nonsensical if the Christian uses it, but one makes sense if the Muslim uses it. Now we've established that that's the double standard. There is, there is, there is, now we've established, wait, is the Quran the word of Allah? Of course. So it's an attribute of God, right? Not an attribute. So does this attribute of Allah exist in one state or multiple states? God has uh, 99 attributes. 99, but one of those attributes, names which reference to the attributes, the Kalam al-Allah, the word of Allah is one, right? You mean the word of Allah? The Quran? Yeah. Is it one? one. Yeah. But you said that it's also half Swash and Duri. We didn't say you no, said that's that. Different. That is what, that see, is what you Muslims You have to understand say. Arabic too. too. No, no, no. Uh, you you say that the Quran is an attribute of Allah. So this is one of the divine attributes. So that one of the divine attributes has a plurality within it. And you're saying that's okay. But then you're saying that we can't have plurality within our concept well, of divinity. You have to all learn Arabic. No, I don't. No, I don't. Allah needs to learn English because he promised. No, no. Allah promised. Allah promised to send a messenger in the language of every people, and the English have never had a Muslim prophet ever. So Allah needs to learn English and send a prophet and keep to his promises. Otherwise, he doesn't keep to his promises and he's not Allah. He's not God. Or three, depending on which. Half wash or dory. Which one? Half wash or dory. Which one? Half wash or dory. Which one? Half wash or dory. You, you're comparing the wrong thing. If you want to compare, no, no. compare God to God, you compare God to books. Is Al is the Quran the word of Allah? God. Yes. Yes. Quran Thank you. Word for word. So I'm confirming. I am comparing the divine attribute of Allah to the divine. <laughs> Thank you. So we have now two Muslims admitting that the Quran is the word of Allah. Does the word of Allah, is it created or uncreated? I'm not knowledgeable. The Quran is one. No, no if you're not knowledgeable, then why are you saying the Quran is one? Which one? Which one? The Hafs, the Wash or the Dori? Which one? Which one do you believe in? The Hafs, the Wash or the Dori? Which one? One plus one plus one. You keep telling us that that's three, so why don't you believe it? There's more, thank you. He just admitted it. He said there's more than half wash or dory. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that more? seven or one? What are you trying to say? The Quran is one. There you go. Seven equals one in Islamic mathematics. Brilliant. Bravo, guys.
Islam makes you, you make you better. I'm not making it up. Which one? Hafs, Wash or Dory? The one. Which one? Hafs, Wash or Dory? What's your point? He's just said there's more than one. What's your point? Right. So, let's try and progress the argument intelligently. Let's try and progress the argument intelligently. We have established that the Quran is the word of Allah. It's one of the attributes of Allah. So, okay. So, is the word is the word of Allah created or uncreated? It is not created. So, it is an uncreated attribute. Now, that Quran exists in several recitations, as this unknowledgeable Muslim just said. Recitations, yes. Thank you. So there is a plurality within this one attribute of Allah. No, 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 no. The Quran is one. It's like you speak English, but you speak Irish English, Scottish English, Welsh English, such a thing, or yeah. Irish English. It's a dialect. Right. But the words are the same. Well, no, firstly, that's three different false. different versions of the same text. Not versions. Not versions. versions. No, no, not versions. In Arabic, yeah, it's written by different people. Yeah, exactly. One if, uh, version. If I tell in Arabic, hello, one marhaba, version. Yeah. The Egyptian will tell me merhaba. Except that, word, except that, yeah. What, you know, what he's, what he's not telling you is that scholars have looked into these different ha harus, these different recitations, and find that there are actually different words. So there are plurals where singulars exist in the text. Yeah. There are some instances where the word Allah appears in one text but doesn't give appear in another. Yeah. Yeah. There are, are texts. There are texts. I'm going to give you a this is a book. Book. You know, yeah, this sounds completely obvious, by the way. No, yeah. Yeah. Fact, it, it, is, it is totally obvious. It is totally obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Muslims believe in a rhetoric that doesn't weigh up against the evidence. No one give me one. I'm not going to give you. I'm going to give you. As no, a no, no, Muslim, let me you have your book. book. With, with, with the Bible, it is the same. No, though. We're, yeah, there are different versions making, yeah, of the Bible. Yeah, but we're not making the same claims let about let our book that they make about theirs. That's the difference, and that's important. Because if they're making a claim about their book that happens to be false. False, then that means a fundamental belief of their book, their religion is false, and their religion is false. You can't we Christians don't make the same claim, so you can't give us the no, same acid test. Right, because we're right. not making that claim. Let me explain to you what okay. one second. I say one thing? Wait, I want to try and progress the argument, because I really do have to go very soon. Christians believe in one God. If you can say that there are different recitations of the Quran, but they're all one, we can say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. How can it you make sense? recitations with God? You, you, don't, you don't feel it's three parts of the same uh, no, overall not. divine no. uh, Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Just to demonstrate that three can be one and one can be three, and no one has any problem with it. Right at this very second, we are all standing in three-dimensional space. And none of us are going to ourselves, Oh, I have to dodge the dimensions. Why? Because we experience it as a singularity that we understand to be one. And we never question it. But we are able to distinguish between the three dimensions. Three can be one. It is not illogical. It actually is quite logical. There's even a mathematical shape that is three and one. It's called a triangle. That's three and one. Can you have a two-sided triangle? There you go. Thank you. When Christ died, how many gods left? Three, two, or one? So, let us deal with that question, actually, because this is one of the stupid things that Muslims say to one another. It is a stupid thing. It really is a stupid thing. Because, brother, 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 if you had taken any time to study the Christian faith, now, I'm going to probably get two councils mixed up here. I believe it was at the Council of Chalcedon. They addressed the very question that you've just asked. So it wasn't stupid, no. then, was it? If no, no. It, if whole no, but, but the thing is, Muslims stupid. come around making an argument without ever looking into it. At the Council of Chalcedon, it says, the immortal does not die. Christ died in the flesh. He died in his humanity. So when Christ died on the cross, the only thing that died was his humanity. We Christians aren't teaching that the immortal God died. It's like getting a rod of iron and a stick of wood and chucking them both in the water. One sinks and one passes right over it. So he didn't die. The immortal, the human Christ, the humanity of Christ died on the cross. 
how is then the death of Christ was the salvation? So, it's a good question. That's a fair question. That's a fair question. Because Christians don't teach that the immortal God has to die for our salvation. We teach that a lamb of God must die. And that lamb must represent humanity. In other words, that lamb must be a human, a spotless lamb, a perfect lamb, a sinless lamb. Christ was a perfect human being, a sinless life, and his humanity died on the cross. That is what we teach. We have never taught the, the divine has to die for the sins of the world. We teach that the Lamb of God must die for the world. And that is what we have always taught. Can I ask you a general question? When the human die? I've just said the humanity die. No, no, when we die. Yes, we will die. I've got to go at the three. You say it's a, an easy concept to understand that three can be one and one can be three. Why is it difficult? It but isn't difficult, isn't it? But a lot of people have a problem trying to, to understand that they can be one. If you explain that to a child, yep. and religion has to be easy for everyone, not everybody's intellectual, not everybody's educated, not everybody has been to I agree, I agree. When you come to a child and tell him God is three but one, would it be easy to a, a child of ten or how is that any? How is that any less complicated than saying seven Qurans are one Quran? No, we are. We're comp you're saying that it's too difficult to say that three is one. How is that any more difficult than saying that seven is one? I'm sorry. You believe in seven recitations of the Quran and then you're saying that they're one. We're in talking about plurality and multiplicity. In comparison, you should always compare like for like. You cannot compare gods to a book. But we're not you comparing. Any citation is the same as God. You're, you're dodging the issue. You're trying to make an argument about the complexity of explaining plurality and unity. But then you're saying, when you explain that three can be one, it's too complicated. But if I explain that seven can be one, it's easy. We're doing the same thing. Explain to me how I can have seven different Qurans and they'd be the same. It's not seven different Qurans. So they're not seven different recitations. There's only one Quran with a different recitation. The words are the same. <laughs> Make your mind up. Are there seven or one? The, the words are not the same. The words are one. The recitation is different. If the words are one, if the words are one. If you say butter, some people say butter, some people say butter. Except that's not what's going on, is it? You don't know the facts. The words are the same. Right, I'm going to suggest. I'm going. No, because you're wrong. I'm going to suggest you and everyone else go today to Waterstones and you buy a book by Dr. Keith E. Small called le less than 15 quid. Less than 15 quid. Called Textual Variants of the Quranic Manuscripts. And he compares the 1924 version of the Quran, which was produced in Egypt and is now mass produced by Saudi Arabia, to the early pamphylicets that were discovered in Sana, Yemen. Have you read the book? They are, they are dated to the 8th and the 9th century. Have you read the so book? he's comparing a 1924 version of the Quran to a 7th and an 8th century Quran. Sorry, 8th and 9th century Quran. Have you read the book? And he finds differences difference in letters you know? and words. Have you read the book? What's the difference? Have you read the book? So examples, examples. Yeah, Example. He finds that where in some places the Quran uses the a plural in the 1924 version, the pamphlet sets have a singular. Now, are, is trees the same word as tree? Uh, like, such as? No, no, I've just given you an example. So plural and singular. Is the word trees the same as the word tree? Yeah. No, they are different. And that is the kind of variant that he discovers in the Quranic manuscripts. That's different. That means the Quran is different. But you're stood here arguing there's only one. Yes, there's another example. There's another example. If you compare, for instance, the Samarkand manuscript of the Quran to the 1924 version, there's an instance in the Samarkand manuscript where the word Allah does not appear and it's likewise passage in the 1924 version of the Quran has the word Allah put into it. Shall we give Bob a challenge? 
next Sunday, can you bring two versions of the Quran that are different? Brother, DCCI has already met this challenge. It's on record. They brought 31 different Qurans to the park. 31? 31. Is it on video? Yes, it's on video. You can see it on DCCI. They've already met that challenge. But here's the thing. If the evidence contradicts your belief, you owe it to yourselves to leave the religion. The Christian faith, by contrast, our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has been attacked for 2,000 years and still stands strong. If you go away and look into the evidence, you'll see it for yourself. But I've got to go. It's nice talking to you. It's nice talking to you. Take care. So, in wrap-up and in conclusion, we've seen that Muslims are working to double standards. They're saying that in Christianity we can't have plural plurality and uh, unity, but in their religion they can. They're arguing that their Quran hasn't been changed against all the evidence, and they argue that their Quran is perfect. But when their Quran describes Christian beliefs incorrectly, rather than simply accept that their Quran is in error, they simply assume that Christians don't know what they believe. Now that's completely illogical. The Christian faith has stood up to scrutiny of the worst kind in Western Europe for 300 years. And our belief in the resurrection stands strong to anyone who is willing to objectively look into the evidence, as I encourage you to do so. By contrast, when we take the acid tests of Islam and we take the doctrines of Islam and we test them, we scrutinize them, we find that the deen of Islam withers and collapses under that scrutiny. And I invite you again to take the time to objectively and sincerely measure the evidence for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and his crucifixion.